One of the things I like about stage analysis, besides being a simple trend following system, is the visual nature of the system and how you can easily pull up a chart of pretty much anything and figure out very quickly whether it's in a stage one basing phase, a stage two bull market, a stage three topping phase, or a stage four decline. Sometimes markets throw you curveballs that make it hard to tell whether a stage transition is occurring, but overall you can get a good idea of where different asset classes are in their cycles and what you want to start paying attention to as far as big opportunities and new bull markets. Now, for example, if I was to show you the charts of GDX and the S&P 500 as we started this new year in 2016, where would you think that there was more opportunity in this chart or in the S&P 500? And if we go back to the picture of stage analysis, it's pretty obvious to tell that GDX was showing that it had completed a massive stage four bear market and was in the midst of a, a stage one basing phase. So it had really completed all the necessary conditions for a new stage two bull market. And we were simply waiting on the high volume breakout above the moving averages signifying a new bull market. Now, on the opposite side, we see the S&P 500, where we had been in an existing bull market for multiple years, and the market had started to top out and trade above and below the 30-week moving average, which signifies a stage three topping phase. So you can see visually that these two markets were in drastically different uh, stages in their life cycle, and were offering different types of opportunities as far as where they might go next. And this is why I was keen on the gold stocks before the stage two breakout that we've seen because, like I said, we had completed these cycles that are necessary for the new stage two bull market. Now, sometimes you don't need a stage four bear market to get a new stage two bull market. Um, in particular, IPOs when they come out, um, a lot of times will base for a long time. And if the overall stock market is in a bull market, you'll see a massive stage two breakout. And one of the main examples that I like to show for that is Tesla, where it IPO'd and went into a stage one base for multiple years before busting out into a massive stage two bull market once the stage two bull in the stock market was rip roaring in 2013, it really became the leader of that bull market. Now, one interesting example for the S&P 500 is the fact that we really didn't see a stage four bear market uh, or a very significant one in 2011, but that set, show the seeds for another major new stage two bull market that launched in 2013 and ran all the way into last year. And really one of the main reasons why this bull market was able to continue was that other sectors came along and took over the leadership reins to drive the overall stock market higher. And in particular, biotech, and the healthcare sector overall was one of the main leaders of that particular phase. You can see here how this massive stage one base ultimately led into a ginormous stage two bull market that topped out last year and has been in a stage four bear pretty much ever since. And looking at the XL, XLV ETF, the healthcare ETF, the same type of thing where we had a stage four bear market in the stock market panic in 2008 and we had a, a new stage two into 2011 but overall we still hadn't made a new high until we busted out 
in 2012 and ran for a couple like about three years into this top and we've been in a stage three topping phase ever since in XLV. So one of the main problems with the current stock market is that there's really no leadership sector taking over to drive this market back into a stage two bull market. And actually underneath the surface, there's been some pretty horrendous stage four bear markets in a lot of different stocks and asset classes. For example, energy went into a massive stage four bear market in 2014, where a lot of energy stocks like the XLE ETF lost almost half its value. And a lot of you know oil and gas exploration stocks and drillers lost 80 to 90 percent of their value or went bankrupt. So you've seen massive hemorrhaging in one of the main sectors of the economy, which has helped keep a lid on the S&P 500. And another example of the carnage that's occurred that's really made it very hard for this market to continue going higher is things like. IPOs where we had a lot of technology IPOs in 2013 and 14 that actually fizzled out and started their own bear markets um, shortly after the IPO. So, for example, Twitter uh, IPO in 2013 tried unsuccessfully a few times to create new bull markets and then ultimately has been in a stage four bear market ever since. So one of the aspects of this S&P 500 that's range bound is you know mini bear markets or actually you know pretty substantial bear markets in a lot of these different stocks that ultimately are preventing the general market from emerging into a bull market and really the question is if that's the case does the S&P 500 eventually break down and move into an official bear market or is there enough damage in all these different stocks that eventually they could st form stage one bases and bust out into a new bull market and then help drive the stock market higher so it's really a question of how much time does the stock market have before something has to give and if the economy you know goes down gets worse if you see more bear markets in a lot of these larger cap stocks, then ultimately the major indexes will be driven into a stage four bear market. But overall, I'm pleased with how the stage analysis screener has picked up like the leading sectors of the gold and silver miners this year and as well, the uh, watch list is bringing in stocks that are breaking out on high volume into new stage two bull markets. And we've seen a lot of gold and silver mining stocks pop into this list uh, for the first half of this year. And we should see any sectors that take over leadership in the market will, you know, be the stage two leaders in the screener, as well as they'll have a large number of stocks that'll pop into the watch list. So overall the system is working very well and um, as far as trend following systems go, I would highly recommend taking a look at stage analysis if you're looking for a simple system to help you trade the markets and especially the, um, the visual aspect of identifying trends in the markets, it's pretty easy to pick up um, if you look at a lot of charts where things are in their respective cycles and get an idea of you know what could happen next and what are the major asset classes that are getting ready to make major moves and where you can create trading opportunities for yourself to ride these major trends.